Assalamualaikum and hello ladies and gentlemen Today we are going to learn about texture attribute Texture attribute is actually an amplitude derived attribute Which we have learned last week about amplitude So the amplitude derived attribute about texture is something that you are looking on the surface of the amplitude What is texture? In general texture can be understood as how does a surface looks like? In this example, we can see as a surface for the obsidian rocks are glassy. Surface for the granitic rocks are quite um, with some coarse grain. It's a very subjective um, description. Surface for the cherries with some blobs and hairies. Surface of the uh, cereal balls surface of the fabric texture so these are the surface in general uh, the texture these are the description of texture for this particular uh, objects so in seismic data we are using texture attributes referencing to the amplitudes distribution in the seismic data before we go further the objective of this lecture is to let the student know and understand how this texture attribute is generated, how they are interpreted, and when is the suitable time to use this texture attribute. This will meet up with our course learning outcome 1 and course learning outcome 3. And please note that most of the materials from this lecture is from Chopra and Mufford book and some of the papers which are available online. What is texture attribute on seismic? As I mentioned earlier, they are derived from the amplitude of the data to facilitate the interpretation. It is actually less familiar to the seismic interpreters because the seismic texture forms the basis of seismic stratigraphy that give rise to the description of um, the behavior of the reflectors which we usually describe as a blocky, hermarchy, parallel or chaotic features. In general, texture attribute is difficult to interpret unless you put some colors to it. So in seismic, we use the variation in color using GLCM, which is description for gray level co-occurring matrix. The gray level co-occurring matrix, we are based on our lowest amplitude which will be put under the value of 1 and highest amplitude which will be put under the value of 8. So the highest amplitude will be in the positive side while the lowest amplitude will be in the negative side. As you can see in the distribution, follow my the mouse pointer, we have the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 distributed all around this cubic, which representing with the gray level co-occur matrix. This GLCM will have a dimension of n times n, which refers to the number of gray levels in the data, in the seismic data. In the seismic data application, the gray levels, which refer to the dynamic range of the data, as example, if we have 8 bits of data, we will have another 256 gray levels. This is equivalent to 1 byte equals to 8 bits and it will give 256 patterns of GLCM. If you don't understand about this, you have to remember back your information system subject if you have ever taken it or check simply check out this link. A GLCM in 8-bit seismic will have 256 rows and 256 columns of elements and this will give up in total 65,356 elements of gray level co occurring matrix. The computation of GLCM by the GLCM matrices at 0, 45, 90, and 135 from the vertical, these, are refer these numbers 0, 45, 90, and 135 are referencing to the 
dipping, degrees of dipping, if we are putting it into our geological things. The final GLCM matrix will be an average of these four preliminary GLCM matrices. So you don't have to worry how these are calculated, but at least you know that they are values in between 1 to 8 representing the highest and lowest amplitude value from our seismic data behind this GLCM. These are the examples. So in figure A, we can see that the cal calculation of gray level co-occurring matrix are based on the attributes which are using 8 gray levels. So the darkest color of gray will be represented by number 8, while the lightest color of gray will be represented by number 1. So these are the color pixels and these are the numbers representing the GLCM. From A and B, the graph is produced. This graph is like a coordinate graph where we can plot if our data is located at point at this point, we are going to have the coordinate value of 1 and 3, which means that our gray levels are in value lowest amplitude from 1 to 3. This value will be transferred into amplitude at into amplitude value from our seismic data, which in the interpretation software, we are going to change the gray levels color into our preferred color. The input parameters for texture attribute will include definitely our seismic data, so it can be 2D or 3D data. Amplitude range of the seismic data, so if we have our seismic data but without an amplitude, so that will mean nothing. It's a meaningless input. We also need a number of gray levels elements. So how many, that all depending on the bits of uh, your data. Number of traces for analysis. A search window means where you want to ask the texture attribute to work. So you have to find a target area, a zone for search window. And then the GLCM attribute and direction of calculation. So the GLCM attribute, which we I'm going to tell you later, GLCM attribute have uh, a list of GLCM. If we refer to one of the reference, the they are in total about twenty attributes that can be used for G that can use GLCM value. However, in this lecture, we are going to focus only on four, which is energy, contrast, homogeneity, and um, uh, energy, contrast, homogeneity, and another one um, I will show later. So the direction of calculation is based on inline, crossline, and is based on the azimuth of the data. So, um, correction for this one, the value of angle is not the dipping angle, it's actually the azimuth of your data. Example for GLCM, this is example um, based on computed GLCM. So, we have our search window in window 1, window 2 and window 3. So, as you can see, in window 1, we have a good amplitude reflections with parallel reflectors. While in window 2, we have a very poor amplitude reflections. We couldn't see much of the data. And at, in, amplitude, in search window 3, we have amplitude of moderate reflectors and they are parallel. So let's see. If we have a metric size or byte num bits number of 16 with metric size of 16, in search window 1, we have smaller number of elements in the GLCM means these point dots are the GLCM value. They are actually in gray level color but we put some interesting colors so that we can understand more. As we can see that the green colors are concentrated in the middle with dark blue colors are concentrated in the outer side. 
we compare with our matrix size of 32 times 32. We have more pixels. We have more uh, gray levels elements. But the concentration of the colors are more focused com compared to matrix size 16. Now, if we compare to matrix size of 64, the pixels are now very anonymous and they combine everything. So, this has the highest number of elements in the GLCM. You can also do the comparison for search window 2, which is very poor amplitude, and search window 3, which is moderate amplitude. Apart from that, if you can see, once we apply this texture attribute to your seismic data, you check the behavior of your reflector. Is it maintained with the same um behavior or there's changes due to the artifacts induced from these attributes as example in this uh, search window one as we can see our first reflectors are still intact but here they are slightly dismersed uh, due to the introduction of metric size uh, moderate number of elements in the GLCM level but for the matrix size 64 even we have some different structure for the reflectors now we only have the red reflectors and we have diminished or removed our green reflectors you can also compare this layer these are slightly undulating with U shape these are flat and these are giving the concave shape so we have, as an interpreter, we have to decide which are the correct metric size for our seismic data to avoid any artifact-induced interpretation. So, as we, as I mentioned, GLCM is not suitable for direct interpretation by human being because they are based on the texture, so it's very subjective. But we can use for description from the GLCM to interpret, which is the energy, entropy, contrast, and homogeneity. These are some of the examples, which I said we have like 20 attributes from GLCM, but we are going to use energy, entropy, homogeneity, and contrast, which are not shown here. So energy, these are the calculation of energy. Don't worry about this formula but energy measures the texture uniformity of an image so it is low when all elements in the GLCM are equal and it is useful for highlighting geometry and continuity so if you are looking for stratigraphic features like channels rivers um, lagoons you might want to use energy as the texture attribute Entropy is, on the other hand, measure the disorder or complexity of the image. It's, it is large for images that are not uniform texturally. In this case, many GLCM elements have low value. In other words, entropy measures the organization of pixels for the images. I'm going to end my first part of this lecture now and will continue in the second part of the lecture with homogeneity and contrast.